everyone, it's Lisa from I Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now, for this week's soap, I'm doing something different just because I was looking around thinking of an idea what to do for this week and I thought I'm going to try and find a technique that I've never done and just give it a go. So I had a bit of a search around and one of the things I came across that I knew about but I've never tried it is a spin swirl. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial as such because this is the first time I'm doing it so it kind of I've got the basic idea of how it's done um, so we're kind of just going along and seeing how it works out so what I've got here is I've got some micas that I'm going to be using I've got some golden shimmer from mica mama some lime from pure rock colors and some activated charcoal I'm also going to be using some titanium dioxide but I'm going to put that in my fourth jug. I'm going to have four colours split evenly. Now the fragrance I'm going to be using is fresh ginger and green tea from NI Candle Supplies. So hopefully I've got the greeny colour, the sort of gold gives me a sort of gingery colour, then the black and white in there as well. Now I'm only making a little batch of this because to be honest, I've got so much soap at the moment. I've just made all my Christmas soaps and everything. We've got soaps coming out of our ear rolls. So I'm really just making this because I need a video for this week and I don't want to put Christmas soaps up yet. So that's why it's just a nice little batch of soap. First of all, because I've not done it before. And secondly, I don't need too much more soap because I've got, <laughs> I have got thousands of bars of soap sitting in my house ready. We've got markets and things coming up soon. So I'm well soaped up. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to take my oils. Now this is a technique where we need to keep everything nice and fluid. So let's just check. Yeah, 93, they're a little bit warmer than I'd like, but I do know my lye solution is a little bit cool. So that should be okay. Right, I'm just going to put some of this oil into these micas just so we can disperse them. Okay, my activated charcoal is already dispersed. I've pre-dispersed that just like I do with my titanium dioxide and my TD, that's just waiting, that's all dispersed as well. That's just waiting for when that jug's available. Let's get this soap mixed up then. Now, as I said, my oils are a little bit hotter than I'd like, but my lye solution is pretty cool. So I'm hoping that that's gonna equal everything out. Let's have a look what happened there. Yeah, so I brought that down to 87, which is probably still a little bit warmer than I'd like for a fluid batter, but never mind. We're going now. <laughs> right, I'm just going to weigh this and then I can work out how I need to divide it out. Okay, so I'm just going to bend this a little bit. So I'm going to split these evenly. Okay, and when I split out, I'm not, I haven't mixed them in straight away because I do like to just check that I've got everything right first. Yep, all looks fine. Now, you don't have to measure them, you can always eyeball it and that sort of thing. I just find it quicker to weigh, because then I don't have to sort of always, do I need a bit more here? Do I need a bit more here? Do I need a bit more here? I just find it easier like that, it works better for me like that. But yeah, if you just want to pour, then that's great. Right, let's get my TD in here. Gonna start mixing these up. Okay, 
Okay, so let's add our fragrance oil now. lovely fragrance it is really but it, they, I'm not sure if I can smell the ginger in it or the green tea to be honest it's just a really lovely fresh slightly zingy fragrance okay okay so I'm just going to now get my mold ready and I'm just going to keep an eye let's put a couple of those up and just make sure that they are emulsified yep everything seems to be okay nothing's splitting apart so I can start to pour and I'm, I'm pouring this fairly early because I do want everything to stay nice and fluid. Okay, let's think how I'm going to do this. Okay. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs now I think with this pour it doesn't really matter how you pour it I've seen people do a kiss pour I've seen people just randomly putting it in the mold I've seen people do little blobs all over the place pouring from the corner corners seems to be a pretty common one jumping from cliffs so high Trust in our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground by the end it was in a really lovely consistency you can tell because how smooth these lines are where there was a bit sort of jagged to start with and that's where it was a little bit thin but I wanted to start thin just so I could end at the top of the soap with the best trace rather than potentially starting with it a bit thicker and then letting it get too thick as it went through Okay, so these are going to be horizontal cuts. So basically we're looking at the top of the, the face of the soap now. And this is only going to be one bar thick. Right, let's get cleared up. Give a tap down. It's still all lovely and fluid, which is excellent news. Right, now I do have a um, turntable. I don't know if that's going to help or not because the base of my mould is not actually solid. No, <laughs> no, that's not going to help me. Right, okay, let's do it without. Okay, so the idea is, is to get the spin going round and it's then the motion when it starts and stops actually causes the soap to move. And we clearly don't want to be too aggressive with it because we don't want to end up with the soap going all over the place, do we? Right, so let's have a look. Oh, yes, look. Yeah, can you see as it stops, the soap moves? Cool. Yeah, you definitely don't need a nice thin trace with this. Okay, 
funny I may stop there I like where it's got can you see it sort of doubled back on itself and done some nice curly bits there hmm do I want to stop there I do want to get a bit more I'd like a bit more in the middle gosh that age-old decision of swirl or over swirl oh goodness me what do I do right I'm gonna try one more I'm gonna leave it I'm going to leave it because I love these. I think these are really pretty. I'm going to leave it like that. Right, so that's that done. I like those colours. So that's really fluid at the moment. So I'm going to leave it there to stiffen up a little bit before I put it away to see pop. Because it's so fluid, I wouldn't be surprised if I get some soda ash on that, even though I will cover it up. But that might happen when you've got a really fluid soap. OK, so there's that done. That went quite well. We'll have a look at what it looks like tomorrow and then just chop it up into its bars. Here we are with our soap a couple of days later. Now I'm doing a voiceover for this bit just because I'm not sure where the sound on this video went. I had my microphone on um, and the little green light was on but no sound. But hey, I'll check that out some other time. So with these types of soaps, I do tend to leave them for a couple of days at least. So anything that's a slab mold or poured really thin, and that tends to really help cut down the amount of soda ash that you get. Now, I don't get a lot of soda ash anyway, but I can get it on a slab mold. So keeping it sealed up for that couple of days does really help. One of the good things with designs like this, and often when you pour sort of multiple loaves, if you have a big slab and you cut the loaves out of the slab and you get to see down the side of the bars as well, that's always a really nice thing. And that's what we get coming through in these bars as well, is having the pattern showing around the edge of the bars and that looks really cool. Now I'm sure what I'm saying is probably not going to tie up with any hand gestures or anything that I've got on screen, but I'm sure you'll bear with me. Now one of the things I, I wouldn't say dislike about cutting a slab, I just don't find them that exciting because especially when it's going to be a horizontal bar, you can see the design on the slab anyway, even before you cut it. And there's, there's just something, isn't there, very special about having a hidden design that you cut through with a loaf cutter and then reveal what you've got inside. So that's, as I say, one of the downsides thing I think about doing a slab mold. So I'm just going to get this cut up into bars. I'm using my um, caterpillar from Custom Craft Tools for this. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out I will just bevel these as we're on screen. I don't tend to bevel my soaps this early. Normally I wait at least three or four days, probably a week before I bevel the soaps and then stamp them. And for me, I, I've got a couple of soap bevelers. I've got a nice acrylic one that works really well. But I must admit, most of the time I just grab a vegetable peeler and use that. I just find it nice and easy. You can bevel at this stage. It's not a problem. The disadvantage with it is the soap can still be quite soft and therefore you get soapy bits stuck to your peeler. Whereas if you do it a little bit later, it's a, it's a cleaner, it's a nicer way to actually do the beveling. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it with the soaps. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soaps. If you have, it'll be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!